If you own a Sony ZV-1 and a Windows PC, the latest firmware update for the ZV-1 allows you to use it as your primary audio and video recording for your web communications, like virtual meetings, virtual interviews, and even live streaming as well. It's super simple and you just need one cable. I'm Derek from Sony. I'm gonna break down what this update is and how to get it. Now, when I mentioned a simplified setup, it really couldn't get any easier than it is after this firmware update. Just take your ZV-1, plug in one USB cable into your PC, change of one or two settings, and that's it. That's all you need to worry about. So this makes it a super simple setup because of the addition of UAC and UVC in this firmware update, which is what allows the video and audio to be communicated through just one USB cable, making it super, super simple. So even if you were using Sony's Imaging Edge webcam, doesn't support audio, the new firmware update on the ZV-1 will allow for that. And in addition, you actually get a higher resolution, jumping from 540p to 720p, making you the best looking one on the internet. So now I know you're thinking, okay, I am sold. Tell me how to get this update so I can do it and be the best looking person in my next interview or in my next web meeting. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is go to sony.com support and search for the model of the camera, in this case, the ZV-1. Now make a note that you can do this for other devices as any other Sony devices that you may have if you're curious about the latest updates and what they do and how to get them. So once you're at the ZV-1, before you waste any more time going further, make sure you check in your camera to see if you do need the update. So the current version as of this recording is version 2.01, which will be shown on the display there on your screen. So you're gonna to wanna to go into the settings of the camera, scroll over to your settings and setup, which is the toolbox icon, page number five, and you're gonna select version. It will tell you which version you are currently on. If you are on the version number that matches what's on the Sony website, you're already updated, you are good to go. But feel free to stick with me if you're curious and just wanna hear what I have to say. So if your camera does need to be updated, feel free to go through and scroll through these different links and downloads. Feel free to read the information, which will tell you what's going on, check the terms and conditions, make sure you're comfortable with that and accept those as well. And then go ahead and download the file. Now, before you run it, there's a couple things you wanna make sure you prepare with the camera uh, to make sure that this update goes very smoothly. Number one, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the camera is fully charged. So make sure you take care of that first. Take out the memory card as well, just to prevent any issues. Make sure you back up your pictures as well and make sure that your computer is either plugged in ideally or is in a setting that prevents it from falling asleep while you're doing the updates and close any other additional programs that you have open. Also make sure that you don't plug anything else into the camera in the middle of the update. You'll also wanna make sure that you change your USB connection type in the camera before the update by going to your menu and scrolling over to the setup toolbox and page three. And in the middle, you'll see USB connection. Make sure that you have selected mass storage. So now that you have the computer and the camera prepared for the update, let's go ahead and run that firmware update file and get this going. So on the screen here, it will tell you the order in which you should perform these actions, such as turning on the camera. The camera should already be in mass storage as well, but obviously check it just to make sure. Then go ahead and connect the camera to the PC with the supplied USB cable and go ahead and hit next. And on the screen, it is going to show you just to verify the current version of the camera you have and then what the update is going to be updating to. Now, if you do run into an error, there are a couple things that may come up. Again, make sure you're using the USB cable that is supplied with the camera. Otherwise, the, the window here will tell you a couple things that you can try, like ejecting it from the computer, double checking your USB connections, and also possibly powering down and powering back on the camera as well and restarting the update. And once it's, once it's done, it'll say that it is updated. Uh, go ahead and click finish and it is done. And once the update is done, go ahead and power your camera back on and go into your setup toolbox and you're gonna go to page five and double check your version there and it should reflect the current version that was on the update. That's how you know that it took and you are good to go. Just a quick note that sometimes after the update as it's restarting, it may give you a data recovery warning. This is completely normal. Don't worry about it. Just wait for this to go away and you'll be back in business. So now that you're updated, the last piece of the puzzle is getting it prepared for your live streaming and your next web meeting. So what you'll wanna do is navigate into your settings and go to your network menu and scroll down to PC remote function and turn that on. This will allow you to actually leave it connected 
and then there's just one other setting that you'll need to do in order to activate the live streaming via USB. So in order to activate the USB live streaming, go ahead and go back into your settings, the camera icon number two, page number four, down at the bottom, you'll select USB streaming. And when you select that, the camera will then be on standby, ready to be working with your software. So then the last and final step is going into your streaming software and changing your camera input to the ZV-1, or in addition, if you want to, you can change your microphone input to the Sony ZV-1 as well. So that's all there is to it. In order to get really high quality audio and video for your next live stream, your next web meeting, possibly your next virtual interview or conference with the Sony ZV-1. So make sure you get yours updated. If you don't have a Sony ZV-1, go ahead and get one. Get it updated and be the bell of the ball on your next web conference. Now, if you do have any other additional questions, make sure you check out sony.com, or if you wanna know if the Sony ZV-1 is gonna be the right camera for you and your needs, it probably will be, uh, you can feel free to reach out to our Sony one-on-one -on -one consultation program and talk to a Sony expert such as myself. Uh, there's a link in the description below. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Derek from Sony, we'll see ya.